Hi guys, this is uh, Daily Devotional this week, um, day 9, and we're reading Nehemiah 4 verse 10. Then Judah said, the strength of the labours is failing, and there is so much rubbish that we are not able to build the wall. And the devotional says, how can I overcome discouragement? Discouragement is curable. Whenever I get discouraged, I head straight to Nehemiah. This great leader of ancient Israel understood there were four reasons for discouragement. First, you get fatigued. You simply get tired as the labourers did in Nehemiah 4.10. When human beings and we wear out, you cannot, sorry, you cannot burn the candle at both ends. So if you're discouraged, it may be you don't have the change to change anything. You just need a vacation. Sometimes the most spiritual thing you can do is go to bed. I like sleeping at the minute, <laughs> but this can also be a discouraging factor. When you feel lazy and sluggish, that can be a discouragement in itself. I'm having to learn at the moment to really, really, really push myself into that motivated mood to just get a simple task like washing up done, and it's hard. So the second, you get frustrated. Nehemiah said there was rubble all around, so much that it was getting in the way of rebuilding the wall. Do you have rubble in your life? Have you noticed that every time you start doing something new, the trash starts piling up? We can all go through this sort of phase where troubles and troubles and troubles and troubles and troubles keep for piling into what looks like a mountain, but really if you kick the mountain, there's just a small molehill. When we lean in God's understanding, we know that those molehills won't last very long. But how do we actually try and sort of combat from the rubbish to the molehill so that we can flatten the molehill? Just lean in God and say, God's got this. If you go, don't clean it out periodically, it's going to stop your progress. You can't avoid it, so you need to learn to recognise it and dispose of it quickly. So you don't lose focus on your original intention. Third, you think you failed. Nehemiah's people were unable to finish their task as quickly as originally planned, and as a result, their confidence collapsed. They were thinking, we were stupid to think we could never rebuild this wall. But you know what I do when I don't reach a goal on time? I set a new goal. I don't give up, everybody fails, everybody does foolish things, so the issue is not that you failed, it's how you respond to your failure. I've come across this a few times as well within my, within my life. I feel like I fail myself. And when you feel like you fail yourself, that feels like the biggest failure and the biggest mountain to overcome. It's really hard sometimes to sort of put aside what it is that you've done wrong, to admit defeat and carry on and pick up the pieces. It's really, really, really struggling to sort of, it's, you know, really struggle when you get so overwhelmed that you don't know what to do anymore. Again, go to God and give, say, he's got it. I can't do this on my own. This also then leads into the next and final um, part of this. It's do you give in to self-pity? We all get pity parties going on, but it's how do we combat that pity party again? You have to shake it off. You have to stand up tall, put your head in the air and say, it's okay not to be okay. Do you stop blaming other people? Well, no, because adversely, you are the only person that is to blame for anything that goes wrong. Everybody fails. And do you, do you then start complaining about what, what's impossible? I do. I'm really, really terrible for it. Um, it's always Billy's fault. It's always Patty's fault. It's always this one's fault. It's always that one's fault. But actually, it's my fault. Do you refocus on God's intentions and start moving forward again? I try, but I don't always succeed. But then again, that can also lead into feeling like you're a failure because you're not leaning on what God is saying to you. You're not leaning on his understanding. Go back to the word. Go back to everything that you've started with from the beginning right the way through. Re redo some of the courses, you know, and just overlook some of your Bible app courses and start again, start from the beginning. It's okay to take a step backwards. As long as you remember, there are 10 more forwards. You know, there's always God in front of you. And there's always Jesus in front of you. But he's not behind us. So why do we keep looking backwards? 
keep moving forwards, keep heading in the direction that God wants us to see. When you give in to fear, you do, you, get you do get discouraged. Nehemiah 4 suggests the people most affected by fear are those who hang around negative people. If you're going to control the negative thoughts in your life, you've got to get away from negative people as much as possible. I've had to cut out a hell of a lot of people in my life because they were, you won't do this, you won't do that, you can't do this, you can't do that. Phone social services, they said that, you know, I'm a bad parent. And then they've, they've battered my confidence so low that I don't even feel like I can get back up anymore. But when you cut those people out, and you start hanging around with people that will give you encouragement, that will give you that word of, yes, you've got this, because God's got this, that's when you start changing things around. That's when you start realising God really has got this. Maybe you're discouraged because of fear and you're dealing with fears like, I can't handle this, this is too much responsibility. Maybe it's a fear that you don't deserve it or the fear of criticism. Fear will destroy your life if you let it, but you can choose to resist the discouragement. Say, God, help me get my eyes off the problem and the circumstances and to keep my eyes on you. This, it, this is so true. Again, it's everything what I've said before and you know, all of, all of, the, all of the things that I've learnt. The root of it all is always God's at the center of everything we do, everything we feel. He's actually put those feelings there for us to be able to handle. We've also had those feelings there in order for us to say, you know, this isn't normal, this isn't right, this is of the enemy. God, you've got to help me with this, you've got to help me relinquish those. It's all about letting go and it's all about not keeping it inside. Have a great day, guys.